Texas Governor Abbott signed a sweeping overhaul of the state's re- uh, the state's election procedures after months of delay caused by Democrats who sought to block the bill. Dems are now filing suit to challenge the law in court. The measure bars round-the-clock polling stations, places new restrictions on drive-through voting and voting by mail, grants more authority to partisan poll watchers, and increased requirements for IDs voters must show when they cast a ballot. Editor-in-chief at The Real News and host of Working People's Podcast, Max Alvarez, and conservative commentator Kelsey Bolar join us now to discuss. So, Max, I'm going to start off with you. Explain to us, kind of walk us through how this is uh, voter suppression. Because it's going to keep people from voting, I guess. <laughs> it's like the main thing. Like, and and also like, just you know, this may be a naive point, or it may I may sound naive making it, but I think uh, in order to kind of really understand the madness that we're witnessing, you kind of have to ask the most obvious naive question: What is the basis for these new restrictions? It's practically nothing. It's a bunch of lies told by Donald Trump and a bunch of Republicans in states across the country running with it because they see it as an opportunity uh, to. First Further limit people's capacity to vote, which we know, you know, it helps Republicans in elections. Since 2004, the Texas State Attorney General has reported 534 uh, offenses of voter fraud committed by just 154 people. When you take in the amount of elections that have happened in that time, that is a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of a percent. This is based on nothing. This is a giant lie that is going to impose real restrictions that are going to hurt people. You mentioned the 24 hour round the clock polling stations. Imagine you're a worker who's pulling a night shift, right? Or, uh, you know, who doesn't get off until, you know, like midnight. That's going to be actually a really helpful thing for you, right? There are also like, you know, further ways that this empowers poll watchers who are going to be kind of aggressive and intimidate people. Um, you know, there, there are ways that you can intimidate someone at a polling place that aren't really kind of obvious or reported. But I sure as hell know that if I have someone kind of looking down my neck, I might think twice about going into that polling station, right? There's just, it's really just a retaliatory measure um, used to kind of, you um, take Donald Trump's lies and further impose voter restrictions on working people in Texas. Uh, it's based on nothing. It's an, it's an obscene power grab. That's exactly what it is. And Kelsey, the uh, Texas Republicans say that this is all about voter integrity and about con- you know, combating voter fraud. But if it were about you know, voter integrity, wouldn't you expect that some of the new rules would would dampen Republican participation in elections and some of the rules would dampen Democratic participation because it would be it would be random. Yet yet somehow in this amazing coincidence, each one of the rules that are implemented winds up disproportionately targeting people who are more likely to vote Democrat. Is that is that the wildest uh, coincidence that's that that that's ever you know broken through statistical improbability or is there something more going on than what Republicans claim? There's a lot of hyperbole surrounding this legislation. And I think it's really telling that critics often paint it and and discuss it in broad uh, strokes instead of getting into the specifics. So, uh, you know, I I printed out a couple of the specifics. Let's let's talk about it. Let's, you know, argue why these are really problematic. So actually this bill adds uh, more hours of early voting than prior. So it is now easier to vote. You have more early voting opportunities uh, than you did prior to this legislation passing. In fact, Texas now offers more early voting than New York or President Biden's home state of Delaware. Imagine that. Uh, This this bill also brings uh, voter ID to absentee ballots. Uh, Look, one of the uh, pieces that critics are complaining about is uh, you can't do drive through voting anymore. First off, this was a very specific COVID uh, allowance that happened in one county. Uh, you, we all know drive through voting is, is not something normal in this country. And I think you usually need a driver's license to, uh, to drive a car. So in order to do drive through you're voting, you need some uh, piece of identification anyways. And you can also, this bill enables voters to use uh, the last four digits of their social security number. Uh, there are opportunities in Texas uh, for free state ID numbers. So that is that is not restrictive uh, in the least. It is, it is certainly ensuring we do uh, know exactly who is voting, uh, which both sides should be 
uh, supportive of. We we heard the same complaints under Hillary Clinton. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, we need voter integrity on on all sides. Um, so you know, overall, this makes this this makes cheating more difficult and it makes voting easier and it expands voting in many ways. So I guess I'm struggling to understand what is uh, so restrictive about this bill. I do think because you already had it. You already had voter integrity. You had like point zero 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 five percentage of uh, people voting fraud in the past two decades. You already had the voter integrity. So if you're imposing more voter restrictive laws, who is that for? You already have it. It's really just, I mean, like, this is the thing that drives me nuts. You're pissing on me and telling me it's raining, right? We already knew that the elections were um, safe because we have the statistic from the Texas Attorney General saying that it is, right? So why, why ask me, answer me this, why do we need these extra restrictions when we already had that voter integrity? Yeah, I- I don't think these extra restrictions are necessary, and I don't really support them either. But I do. See, it seems a little hypocritical to me. I, so you know, Republicans, conservatives want these restrictions, or make you know identification for voting, and then Democrats or some, some Democrats, liberals, I want to require identification to like go anywhere in the pandemic. Um, it seems like uh, like there, there's some hypocrisies to settle there. Um, sw- uh, switching gears uh, just a little bit, talking about a different Texas issue. The governor of Texas was asked by reporters reporters why women who are victims of uh, rape or incest will be forced um, to to uh, carry to term. And he said here that, uh, well, we're going to eliminate all rapists uh, from the the street. Governor, regarding the heartbeat film, why force a rape or incest victim to carry a pregnancy to term? Uh, It doesn't require that at all, because uh, obviously uh, it provides uh, at least six weeks uh, for a person uh, to be able to uh, get an abortion. So for one, it doesn't provide that. That said, however, let's make something very clear. Rape is a crime, and Texas will work tirelessly to make sure that we eliminate all rapists from the streets of Texas by aggressively going out and uh, arresting them and prosecuting them and getting them off the streets. Is that a satisfying answer, do you think? Or do you want to go first? (laughs) (laughs) Our conservative guest. Uh, look, it's it's a piece of the answer. Uh, he is right. Rape is a crime, and we need to be clear about this legislation. Uh, you know, if, if if a woman is raped, she isn't. She knows she was raped, and I uh, do hope that she would be seeking uh, medical attention and counseling after the fact. Uh, she still has every opportunity to um, obtain the morning after pill. She has the opportunity to uh, get an abortion uh, up to six weeks. You know, I hate to be blunt, but if if a woman is raped, she knows she was raped. So she does have the opportunity uh, to minimize the risk if that's happening. Uh, More broadly speaking, I I think this is kind of uh, a straw man's argument uh, and and not a very effective one regarding uh, the legislation in Texas, which I understand Americans have very different and passionate views on uh, the issue of abortion. But rape accounts for such a small percentage of uh, of abortions in Texas and nationwide. And again, women who are raped still do have weeks to uh, to do what they need to to take care of themselves and, and ensure that they don't need to carry that pregnancy uh, to term. Heaven forbid that ever happens. Well, barely have weeks because they the, the way that Texas does its counting is they go to last menstrual cycle. So for practically half of, of the period where you're eligible to get a legal abortion in Texas, you're actually not even pregnant. Um, but, but Max, I'm curious, if Texas actually does have this capacity to eliminate rape, why have they waited so long? Because this is uh, the, a bad faith talking point that is meant to deflect from the question that was asked, right? As was the kind of, you know, applause that quickly followed it. Like, I'm also pissed off at the journalist for not immediately following up with the question that should have been asked, which is, you know, like, which is the question that you just asked, Ryan. I mean, like, you know, the anti-sexual violence group Rain has said that 31% of rapes nationally are reported, just 31%. 5% of those actually lead to an arrest. Half of that 5% actually lead to a conviction. So the notion that you're going to kind of just eliminate rape in Texas is bonkers to 
me. And it drives me nuts that like people like me on the left are the ones who are constantly told that we are the wide eyed idealists for wanting to, you know, provide people health care, right? For wanting to live in a less like, you know, unequal, unjust society. And yet the governor of Texas can come out and respond to a question that he has an obligation to uh, answer for his constituents and deflect by saying, oh, well, we're going to solve this problem by getting rid of rape entirely. Like no one believes that. If you do believe that, I don't know what planet you're actually living on. And just to really underscore the point that you made, Ryan, because this is something a lot of folks have asked me since um, our last segment last week. Yes, I mean, like most people, when when folks who are watching hear the the um, line that most people don't know that they're pregnant by this six week cutoff, it's because of what you said, because it starts from the last period. So then you got about four weeks, you miss that period if everything goes fine, right? If there are no irregularities, then you basically have two weeks to try to get that abortion, right? So this is effectively, you know, a ban for the vast amount of people who may want to get an abortion or who may need an abortion. So, I mean, like, let's just please stop pretending like this bill is anything other than what it is. Well, I do want to just clarify real quickly that it isn't it isn't a six week ban. It's a it's a heartbeat ban, isn't it? Or is it actually right, the, do not, they say six weeks or they say it, heartbeat? But it's not actually a it's not actually a heartbeat. It's this like electromagnetic thing that, fl- that flickers between right. a, between a couple of different cells that can only you know, another be picked question. up by a. Yeah, that, yeah. That's not right. a heartbeat. <laughs> I can no. I can tell you as someone yeah, who's seven not, months pregnant and has been to many of these ultrasounds, that is that is a heartbeat. <laughs> What, you know, well, you, you know, can do, my you question can do an also, ultrasound and hear something that sounds like a heartbeat that 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 isn't defined yet as a yeah. heartbeat. I would like to read this bill a little bit more and find out do they do they specify what device you have to use in order to detect this heartbeat? I mean, can you just put a stethoscope up to the belly and say, "Oh, I don't hear anything," or do you have to use a sophisticated ultrasound? You know, that is something kind of interesting to to sort of look into. But, you know, in regards to Governor Abbott's comments saying that, well, we're going to get rid of rape. I mean, and look, unless he's got some sort of minority report ability where he can detect rape before it even happens, he's talking about putting people away who've already done the raping. So these women are already affected by this. Um, you know, this isn't a way to prevent rape. This is just a way to punish it. He doesn't actually address the issue. Right. And asking well, like people, on top of that, yeah. I mean, like you know, we were just talking about preserving the integrity of the electoral system. Right. Why don't we divert just a fraction of that energy to preserving the quote unquote integrity of a criminal justice system that is meant to bring justice to people who commit the unspeakable act of rape. Right. Texas has thousands and thousands of untested rape kits just sitting on a shelf. Right. Sexual violence advocates have been pointing this out for a long time. We mentioned that, uh, you know, we would hope that people who are raped would report it. That's We can hope all we want. The statistics show that that's not always the case. And a lot of people have different reasons for not reporting it. One of the most obvious is that if they do, your, your, your rape kit may just be sitting on a shelf and no one will be doing anything or the police may not do anything or the police may in fact aggravate that, right? So there are a lot of reasons why people right. will not yeah. report a rape. Uh, but women I would don't say that have to just, report yeah. a rape in order to obtain the morning after pill or in order to obtain an early abortion. Oh, but yeah, is this I, I gotta, uh, yeah, we gotta leave it there. Let's just say one yeah. thing, though: is, is this really the society we want? That in 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 the wake of the, one of the perhaps the most uh, traumatic experience of a person's life, uh, she needs right. to have the wherewithal to run down to CVS and and grab a morning morning after pill, right. and other otherwise, because two weeks later she's going to find out that she's she's pregnant and now not able to get an abortion because uh, Texas some dudes in Austin. Uh, you know, have decided that that they they want to make that decision for it's just this is the world we want. Uh, thank well, you. And that's no. what I was going to bring up was really that it is highly traumatizing for women. Um, you know, and so it's I, I I I could just tell you it's extremely traumatizing, and even the strongest of women, uh, when they're faced with this, end up hiding away and feeling uh, powerless and I can't even express the trauma that it actually, the impact that it has on a woman and her mentality and her ability to make those types of rational choices. So I totally agree with Ryan on that. Uh, We have to leave it there. Uh, Thank you, Max and Kelsey, for being with us. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Next on Rising, co-host of the Bad Faith podcast, Brianna Joy Gray, joins us to discuss her recent conversations with Talia Lavin about de-radicalization and coalition building with the far right. 